Hello everybody, hope you had a good Easter. I went up to the clubhouse for breakfast uh, yesterday and then went to church for Easter services, came home, did a little work and took a nap. So it was a good uh, Easter day. Our breakfast today consists of uh, ramen noodles with some, oops, I spilled, some green onions and uh, some chickpeas, kind of a vegetarian meal. I was gonna put some Vienna sausages in, but you know what? I, I didn't like the look of them. And I've read things on blogs about Vienna sausages that they're really not uh, not good. Now we're gonna add uh, a hard-boiled egg. You can see the B on it, I think. To this, it's still in the shell, so break it open. I don't have good luck with hard-boiled eggs, getting the shell off. What, what I do is I crack it like that, hit it a couple times, and I roll it. I'm hoping the shell comes off really easy. I don't know if it will or not. Oh, oh good. Good. Reminds me of live TV back in the day. When something went wrong, it went wrong. And you had to live with it, work with it. It looks like I got to peel off this hard-boiled egg. Now, that's something to uh, rejoice about in my life, when I can peel a hard-boiled egg uh, without going into a snit. Okay. It's in there, cover it up with noodles, let it get warm. All right. I did uh, squeeze some lemon into the ramen noodles, a little hot sauce, and a little soy sauce. So let's see what we've got here. Let's taste it. Not bad. The chickpeas add a very nice texture and flavor. I like them. Well, I managed to write my uh, Romney poem this morning for the New York Post. He's still contending against uh, Newt Gingrich and uh, Santorum, but Santorum's daughter is very, very ill, so he's stopped campaigning. And Gingrich apparently is out of money. If they were smart, which they're not, you know, they'd give up graciously, concede, and uh, endorse Mitt Romney so they could get a nice post in the coming administration. You know, cabinet post. I could see uh, Gingrich as uh, Secretary of Commerce, maybe. Santorum, uh, I don't know, Postmaster. Something. I'll be very disappointed if Romney does not get the nomination for some reason. Because I do plan on writing a poem a day until the election for him. A little focus in my life, you know, I need that. Now Romney's critics are going about this the wrong way. And if you're a Romney critic, I'm going to tell you what you need to be doing, okay? If you really want to find out about this guy, you should find out what church callings he's had in the LDS church, because these are all volunteer positions. Everything, pretty much, is a volunteer position in the church. Don't pay for anything. So it'd be interesting to know what callings uh, Romney's had. Has he been a bishop? Has he been on a stake high council? Has he been a stake president? I think he's been a stake president. These business guys usually are, you know. A 
Because if he's been a bishop, oh ho. Oh. You'll find a lot of people who want to will want to criticize him, who disagree with him and think that uh, they were treated shabbily when he was their bishop. It usually has to do with the uh, welfare. You know, church members can go to their bishop and ask for help. That's why Mormons fast <clears throat> once a month. They go without two meals, usually breakfast and lunch. Don't drink anything either. One Sunday a month. And then the money they save on food, they donate to the church. It's called a, a fast offering. And the bishop has the use of those funds uh, to help people who are in trouble. And bishops, they're not stingy with the money, but they're careful and they're cautious with what they do with it. A lot of times if it's a matter of just getting groceries to somebody, that's, that's not a problem. Uh, the church has storehouses all over the country full of food, non-perishable items for the most part. I've had them before when I needed them. But sometimes bishops will give out money, too. But I'll bet you dollars to donuts if uh, Mitt Romney ever was a bishop. The news media will be able to find people who were under his care who went to him to ask for financial help and he turned them down. So they're mad at him. They think he's a miser, stingy, cold-hearted. I went to my bishop once, years ago. I couldn't uh, meet the rent, didn't have money for the rent. So I asked the bishop for uh, <clears throat> help on the rent. He said no. So I eventually found the money someplace else. I don't remember where. I think I sold my TV set, borrowed some money from friends, and had to sell most of my book collection to make the rent. I don't feel anything against that bishop. That was his prerogative. It was fine. But there's lots of people and they get really offended when they ask for help and they don't get it. So if Romney was a bishop, <coughs> that's where his critics, <coughs> excuse me, that's where his critics need to be looking. I'll find some interesting stuff. I'm sure he's been a home teacher. The media could find out who he home teaches. They could go interview them. Oh, that'd, that'd be great. They'd have a field day. New York Times already ran an article about him when he was a missionary in France. It wasn't critical. It just seemed like the reporter was kind of bored. 
with that assignment. No spicy little uh, episodes with a Parisian girl. No heavy losses at uh, Baccarat. No run-ins with uh, Picasso. Or anybody. Just a dull everyday work of a missionary. Mormon missionary knocking on doors. Talking to people about the church. Nothing very glamorous about that. Got my hat on while I'm eating breakfast. I think that's rude. You notice how many people, especially young men, wear caps everywhere nowadays, even indoors. Up at the clubhouse, got a lot of young guys up there. They all got these hats on. They won't take them off. I don't know, are they bald or something? What's the deal with not taking off your hat? Wearing it everywhere. Oh, another seed fell in my Kool-Aid. Oh well. Pink Kool-Aid again, folks. And actually, it's uh, regular uh, lemonade. And I poured in some grenadine syrup to uh, turn it pink. Limonada Rosa. I learned that this weekend. We had a lemonade stand. Here for the landlady's kids. I took care of them. And my grandson Diesel, and I did not want him in the house all day playing computer games and watching movies. So basically, we all went outdoors. I locked up the house. We set up the uh, lemonade stand. I said, You're not going back inside till this evening. Oh, they wept and they groaned and they gnashed their teeth. This was terrible abuse. But then some kids came by that bought some lemonade and they got all excited and other kids came by to play and the time went by. They never asked to go inside except to use the bathroom. Now I know most parents just don't have the time to do that. But that's the way to raise kids. Throw them outside and let them play. Let them do whatever they want. The lemonade stand was just an excuse for kids to come over so they could get to know each other. They played on the tire swing. They ran around. They jumped over the uh, open ditch that's in the front of the house. And I sat in a chair, read a newspaper. Told him to get out of the street once in a while. <clears throat> but otherwise, I left him alone. The secret to rearing children, <clears throat> the secret to rearing children is to throw them outside <clears throat> on a nice day and leave them alone. They'll come up with their own play. Sometimes it seems idiotic, sometimes it's beautiful. Leave them alone. Let them play. Leave me alone. Let me play. I've been asking the world to do that for years and it won't. Bah! 